Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I hear there's a big race this Saturday. Oh, that's it, Matt. They drew the Kentucky Derby late this morning out there at Churchill Downs, so we're going to do a draw analysis. We're going to do a pace projection. We're going to talk about our top long shots for the race, Matt. This is going to be an excellent show. Are you ready, sir? I am absolutely ready. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, before that, though, Matt, I want to remind our wonderful watchers out there to subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Turn on those notifications now. This is the most important time of the year to turn those notifications on so you don't miss any of our triple, count, triple crown coverage. Easy for me to say right here on Horse Center. Matt, let's jump into the draw. I think the biggest news from today's draw, Matt Schiffman, was who drew the rail, the dreaded rail. No one's won since Ferdinand did it back in 1986 from the rail. Known agenda, one of the main players. Six to one on the morning line. Third choice drew the rail, sir. Is this big, big trouble for known agenda? Well, Brian, that may have been the case back in 1963 or 1987 or 1999 or 2012 when it was the two starting gates, but they spent all that money on this newfangled fancy starting gate to make things a little bit fairer. Yeah, I agree with you, Matt. Uh, I, I hope you mentioned 2010 in there when looking at Lucky just got shut off on the rail and not, uh, I believe that was 2010 Kentucky Derby, Matt. Hey, I'm with you. The new rail helps. It was uh, first unveiled last year's Kentucky Derby, last September's Kentucky Derby. And I think it does make things fair for pretty much every, everybody. You don't have that big mosh of horses from the two different gates coming together, first of all, which is a big thing. But you also have the rail horse being closer or a little farther outside now where he doesn't have to kind of sneak through to try to get into that rail position like it uh, used to be. Uh, have to do with the two gates. Listen, known agenda, he's got no horses with speed in the next, what, five spots next to him. He's got one of the best race riders in the world, Irad Ortiz. This horse has won from the inside before rallying through horses. I'm not saying I love the rail draw, Matt, but I think uh, it doesn't look all that bad, at least for me, for known agenda. I agree with that, Brian. You know, it, it's not the immediate death sentence uh, that it used to be. When that old gate, there wasn't room for that gate to fit in the space up there. But this new gate uh, uh, allows a good distance between the one slot and the rail. And let's face it, known agenda is not going to the lead, was never going to the lead, was, was and is a horse that was going to lay mid-pack so now what's going to happen? He's going to come out of the gate uh, uh, as he pleases. He's going to have a ground-saving trip guaranteed on the rail, Brian. He's going to chance to probably sit mid-pack. And Irad Ortiz, you know, who many believe is the best jockey in the country right now, is a jockey who prefers to not rush, his, rush horses to the lead, but to come from off the pace. So... Yeah, would it have been better if Known Agenda had drawn the 10? Uh, probably, but so much can happen in the Derby that, you know, we're just guessing at any point what's going to happen coming down the stretch. But uh, Known Agenda is one of my top picks. I'm not throwing them out. Yeah. Hey, they say luck of the draw. I think it's luck of the first uh, 20 steps out of the starting yeah. gate or the first 20 yards out of the starting gate. That's when real trouble happens. Uh, what Matt and I are saying is, don't be surprised if the one hole is not the worst thing in the world for a known agenda, one of the favorites. Matt, two, three, four, five, like the king, Brooklyn Strong, keep me in mind, St. Hood. They are all 50 to one. None of them really have a lot of speed. I guess we don't have any problem with those posts. These horses are going to drop back. Yeah, without question, Brian. And, you know, and then you go to number six with Obesos, um, who I think we both consider more of a threat in the race than some of those other ones but also uh, not a lot of speed. Yeah, yeah. Obesis uh, doesn't have to worry about finding a good position early. He's going to drop pretty far back. In fact, he's one of the most sure horses, I think, that'll drop back. And he, too, has rallied from the inside in his career. Number seven, Matt, is Mandaloon, kind of a real wild card for him. 
I think seven makes a lot of sense for him, as it does number eight for Medina Spirit, two horses with some tactical speed. Yes, Brian, they're in, they're in a good position to uh, uh, do what they want to do. But when you're talking about uh, having that tactical speed, uh, they are horses that are vulnerable to stuff going on early out of the gate. If they want to be a presser and get right up behind the pace, uh, things have to go smoothly for them. Right. Things have to go smoothly from them. And as horses who might want to stalk the lead, they might have some other horses like themselves coming in from the outside. One of those horses is immediately to their outside. And one of the race favorites, uh, eight to one on the morning line, fourth choice is Hot Rod Charlie. Nine hole seems pretty good for him. Like the, the horses I just mentioned, though, he will have horses on his outside with a little bit of speed or tactical speed kind of moving over. All in all, though, I can't be too unhappy about the nine hole for Hot Rod Charlie. Yes, it is. it's a good spot for him if all goes well to get into the, the stalking position right in the catbird seat for the Doug O'Neill runner. Yeah, and one of the most common uh, spots to win the Kentucky Derby is from post 10. Post 10 is Midnight Bourbon. I think that's a good draw for a 20 to one shot on the morning line, Matt. He has a lot of speed. Mike Smith's going to get on in the, in the Derby. And uh, I kind of expect Midnight Bourbon to make it, be making an early move from that 10 hole. Yeah, a real consistent kind of performer, but one of the ones that probably wants to be uh, moving a little quicker out of the gate. And the 10 hole is a great spot for it. Yeah. The next couple on the list, Matt, are a little bit longer shots, although the 11 uh, get some love, I think, on the morning line. Dynamic 1 at 20 to 1. Uh, there's been a few people talking about him, including yourself, Matt Shipman, and I think you have to be pretty much tickled pink in the 11 hole. Yeah, at least, you know, <laughs> at least Pletcher got a decent post position uh, with, uh, with Dynamic 1. Um, drawing the one and the 20 with a couple of his other horses. Right. Outside him is Helium and Hidden Stash, the 12 and the 13. They're both at 50 to one. No love for the Tampa Bay Derby winner shown by the uh, morning line odds maker, Mike Battaglia, 50 to one on Helium. I would expect him kind of more middle pace, maybe Hidden Stash drops a little farther back. Once again, no real issues unless something unlucky happens for those 12 and 13 positions. Yeah, absolutely. They're not worried about flying out of the gate. They can come out and have their jockeys, you know, uh, 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 settle them down and uh, get into a comfortable stride. Okay, Matt, now we really start to get into the meat of this draw because the two race favorites, the favorite, Essential Quality, drove 14, Rock Your World, second choice on the morning line at five to one, right outside them in the 15 hole. Yeah, Brian, and and uh, different kind of running styles there. Um, and we'll talk more about that in the pace projector uh, as we go along. Yeah, essential quality. Listen, I think he wants to be in the first 10 of this Kentucky Derby. 14 seems like a good spot for him. More speed to his outside. Obviously, Rock Your World wants to go out there from the 15 hall. If I was their connections, if I was their trainer, I, I'd be pretty happy with where they drew. It seems like there's been more derby winners from the outside than the inside of late, including last year, 15, Authentic, did a lot of good front running to win last year's Kentucky Derby. Number 16 is a horse who wasn't on the list a week ago, Matt, but he's looked good at Churchill Downs. He's gotten some talk from the, from the wise guys, Matt Schiffman. He's King Fury. Uh, all of his wins, he's come rallying up to win. But on the other hand, he's also made his move a little bit earlier than a true late uh, stone, clo stone cold closer. Yeah, and certainly whatever happens in the, you know, early going and the first half of the race is going to dictate for a horse like King Fury how far behind he is and when he's going to be able to make make his move but as you said brian a uh, couple of big wins at churchill downs as a as a uh two-year-old and then came back uh with a really uh nifty performance to win the lexington at keeneland and get into the field yeah yeah he uh he made an early move in that lexington from pretty far back it was on the slop 
Uh, you might be a horse who prefers the slop over a fast track, but he certainly won at Churchill Downs, as you mentioned, and on a fast track before. Number 17, the fifth choice on the morning line. Lucky, now let's say that differently, unlucky number 17, Matt Shipman, for a highly motivated 10 to 1 on the morning line. Yeah, is that 17? Is that still the post position that nobody's won from, Brian? That is true. Yeah, and, uh, you know, from what I've heard from uh, Chad Brown, uh, they want to get going out of the gate fairly quickly with highly motivated as he did um, in the bluegrass. Yeah. So it's interesting here. 14, the favorite 15 rock your world, the speed 16 King fury and uh, highly motivated two horses that don't want to sit too far back. It'll be interesting how four of those maneuver uh, the first quarter mile towards that first turn at Churchill downs. Number 18 is super stock. We said he got a perfect trip when he won the Arkansas Derby 18 seems a little bit farther outside than I would want, but his trainer, Steve Asmussen, said it's just fine. It's perfect. Yeah, it's the new mellow Steve Asmussen. Uh, uh, seems okay with it. Um, hey, he's probably going to not encounter much traffic out there. He can settle in and uh, make a move. Yeah, I would expect him to drop a little farther back than those horses we just talked about directly to his inside. One horse who I expect to show some speed is uh, number 19, Soup and Sandwich, the uh, good-looking gray son of Into Mischief, the second from the Mark Cassie barn mat. Uh, 19 hole sounds a little bit daunting for a lightly raced speed horse, but on the other hand, maybe he can just chase Rock Your World into the first turn and actually get a good stalking trip from the outside. Yeah, maybe. You know, in some ways, I think that Soup and Sandwich might be the biggest loser um, in the post-position draw because, uh, you know, uh, I, I think as a horse who has raced very close to the lead before, if they're going to use that strategy, he's going to have to go and go hard out of the gate from the 19 hole. Maybe. I, I'm probably not quite as uh, down on that spot as you are, because I think he can show more speed than a lot of other horses out there. So uh, again, I could see a good stalking trip fourth or fifth early from the 19th hole sitting outside Rock Your World. It's possible. Good looking horse though. Number 20, 72 to one shot winner of the Wood Memorial Mat. Fourth horse from Todd Pletcher's barn. That's Burbonic. I like the name. I still don't know if I like the horse. I don't see him showing any speed after that late run in the Wood Memorial. So from 20, he's just gonna drop back and ease over. No question about it. And, and uh, uh with jockey Kendra Carmouche, who is uh, one of the best front end runners uh, on the New York circuit, but also knows to, how to race from behind as he showed uh, in the Wood Memorial. Hey, Brian, he's only 30 to one on the morning line here. That's an underlay compared to the Wood Memorial. There you go, Matt. It's, uh, 30 to one sounds about right. There's, there's some interesting odds here from horses who won big preps. Burbonic Superstock, 30 to 1 after winning the Wood and the Arkansas Derby. And as I mentioned, Helium, 50 to 1 after winning the Tampa Bay Derby. All right, that's our quick draw analysis and, and a little bit of talk about these horses, Matt. Let's really buckle down now with our pace projection for the race. I think Tony uh, Badabing is going to show us some chiclets here as we go over this. Uh, as we did this, we only decided on two horses on the pace. We called it on the pace. I think the most likely early leader, though, is that 15, Matt, rock your world. Yeah, I mean, with his victory in the Santa Anita Derby, uh, with that front running style, um, uh, it would seem likely Midnight Bourbon also has wanted to go to the front. It's a tricky business, you know, with a field of 20 uh, putting together a pace projection because, you know, one wrong step out of the gate with 20 horses and uh, your plans to be on the lead are suddenly gone. Very good point, Matt. That's right. Yeah, this, this is all kind of uh, assuming everything is fair and, and no one has bad luck. But as we know in the Kentucky Derby, that is never, literally never completely true. So hopefully we'll have as fair a race as possible. But Rocky World coming off that Santa Anita Derby, I don't think he wants to have dirt kicked in his face for the first time here. 
And I tell you what, I think he may have been the biggest uh, beneficiary when Cattle River, the horse we really thought would be on the lead in the Kentucky Derby, uh, backed out with a slight uh, fever uh, uh, earlier in the week. So rockier world from the 15. I just expect Mike Smith to send Midnight Bourbon pretty pretty hard from the 10 hole. So he's the other on the pace. But then you got a lot of horses that probably want to be pretty close behind. And, and, and despite the fact that Hot Rod Charlie was ahead of Midnight Bourbon, uh, in the Louisiana Derby, I kind of think they're going to be reversed here in the Kentucky Derby. Hot Rod Charlie has shown the ability to pass horses. I think he went to the lead in the Louisiana Derby only because there wasn't much speed uh, quickly in that race. So we have him leading the close behind group along with Medina Spirit, Bob Baffert's only runner in the field, Matt, and Soup and Sandwich coming from the far 19, outside 19 post. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. How many of those five that we've mentioned in the first two categories are going to be pretty close to the lead? Um, and I agree with your assessment of Hot Rod Charlie. I think his front end victory in the Louisiana Derby was a, was a bit situational in that he got out of the gate quickly, found himself on the lead. Uh, settled into a nice stride. Nobody came up and challenged him. So he just kept going. Um, it certainly isn't going to play out like that in the Derby. So I, I see Hot Rod Charlie as, one, as less likely to be right up close to the lead than maybe the other four. Yeah, and, and all five of these horses, Matt, I don't think they're complete throwouts. We're talking about the two on the pace horses we have, Rockier World and Midnight Bourbon, who are... Uh, out of the 15 and the 10 hole. Then Hot Rod Charlie, the nine, Madeira Spirit, right to his inside the eight, and then Soup and Sandwich way on the 19. These are all horses who have at least a fighting chance. We would expect them to be following close behind. And these are horses that can probably stick around for a long time in this mile and a quarter uh, Kentucky Derby as we move down that Churchill Downs backstretch. The next group, Matt, we call the stalking group. And I think these are all horses who don't want to be too far. So we talked about five, maybe on or near the pace. These three make eight that don't want to be too far back, but they have a little bit more rally ability, if that's a word. Uh, uh, so we put them in the next group, the stalking group, led by Essential Quality, the favorite, the undefeated champion, highly motivated, who Chad Brown says might want to show a little bit more speed again from that 17 post. Highly motivated, has broken poorly, we didn't mention uh, a few times. So it's really important that, that he gets a good start so he doesn't get shuffled too far back, which I think could be a real problem for him. I don't want him uh, 15th or so early on. And then Mandaloon, another horse. I just don't know exactly what he's going to do, but I would expect uh, relatively close to the pace from the seven hole. Yeah, I agree, Brian. So now we're now we've got a list of eight horses um, and uh, who, you know, to some extent have similar running styles. And, you know, we're going to see what happens with them. Right. A little bit of luck, uh, a little bit of race riding, and a, and a little bit of what jockey does the best decisions uh, early and, and mid race in here. But uh, I could easily see all eight of these horses within five, six lengths as they go down that Churchill down uh, backstretch. Matt, the next group is the biggest group. And this is where maybe the most shuffling and the most racing luck could happen. We call them the mid pack and it's a little farther back maybe than the true middle of this 20 horse field. But I guess this would leave us about nine through 16. These are horses who don't want to be out of touch early, want to find racing room, but want to make a nice move on the turn so that they're in really in the race by the turn they uh, turn for home. We already talked a lot about known agenda on the rail. He leads the mid pack group. But you also got the Arkansas Derby winner, Superstock Mountain. You got the Tampa Bay Derby winner, Helium. Like the King, the, the, the Ruby Stakes winner, Dynamic One, your, your long shot that you like so much. King Fury, the interesting uh, Lexington winner from the Barnett Kenny McPeak. Brooklyn Strong, who's kind of a uh, feel-good story, who got Umberto Rispoli at Derby Mount after all. And finally, St. Hood, a horse who, frankly, I thought looked very good in the mornings out here at Churchill Downs. It's a big group, Matt. Yeah, and, and these mid-packers are kind, you know, kind of deal with the race the opposite of the horses that we mentioned that want to be on the front. Those 
those frontly, forwardly paced horses got to get to that position quickly. These mid packs are going to be happy to come out of the gate easily, find a nice spot, get into stride comfortably down the back stretch, coming around the clubhouse turn. That's when it gets tricky for these guys because they got to start making their move and they have to start dealing with horses that are tired, that are that are falling back and creating traffic problems. So for them, it's heading into the final turn, getting a clear trip, not having to steady or check as they try and make their move. Absolutely. Racing luck will play a big part with this mid-pack group that we talked about. How many was that, Matt? That was about uh, uh, eight horses in this mid-pack group. Uh, frankly, I've seen a lot of Kentucky Derby winners in the past come from this group but it hasn't happened lately. Uh, most of the Kentucky Derby winners in the last 10, 12, whatever years have come from much closer to the pace. In fact, the last seven, eight years, Matt, uh, maybe seven years, because I think eight years ago was Orb, but maybe the last seven years, they've all been horses like that top eight early that have wanted to be close, close, close to this Kentucky Derby pace. Luck will play a part. Known agenda tops that group. Then you got the late runners, Matt, and these are the horses that are like uh, Giacomo and Mind That Bird and Street Sense. There have been a lot of winners that have come from back over the years, but it's not easy. Racing luck plays a part. You, you want the pace to be relatively fast, and maybe you want a, horse, a lot of horses who really don't want 10 furlongs to be part of it, too, so that they can kind of pick up the pieces to get a big check, if not even the win in the Kentucky Derby. We've identified four horses that we really, they might not be the last four early, but we don't think any of these four really want to be uh, uh, too far up, even into well into the mid pack. They want to make one late run. Obesis, Bourbonic, the Wood Memorial winner. Hidden Stash, fourth in the bluegrass. And finally, keep me in mind who could be Matt Schiffen, the longest shot on the Kentucky Derby odds board. Yeah, and these are horses that don't that aren't necessarily going to win the race, but at big odds are horses that you have to think about if you're a trifecta player, if you're a superfecta player, there are plenty of these that have picked up the pieces, passed a lot of tired horses, gotten into the trifecta to produce a nice payout. That's right. And, and again, I'm going to mention the defection. Well, first concert tour, I thought he was big speed horse and then Caddo River, who I think is a true speed horse. The fact that neither of these are in the race makes me like the late runners just a little bit less than I did a few days ago or a little bit over a week ago when I thought those Arkansas Derby horses would be a part of this Kentucky Derby. I like at least one of the late runners to, uh, to, to, to make up some ground, make up some, uh, uh, real uh, distance in the stretch here. So we'll see. Those are the four we see last early. And hopefully we'll have a fair Kentucky Derby, a safely run Kentucky Derby map. And hopefully we'll have some drama in the last eighth of the mile at Churchill Downs. That's our pace projection. Yeah, we'll see how it all plays out. You got to get a trip in the Derby. Racing luck. Racing luck more than any other race is a big part of this Kentucky Derby. All right, Matt, we talked about the draw and our analysis thereof, and we talked about the pace projection. Part of this show, though, this show in particular, the first of two this week, we, want, we really want to identify the long shots that we're kind of zeroing in on. And this Kentucky Derby, I think more so than most, I had a hard time narrowing my top long shots down to three because I think there's a lot of interesting – long shots in this race, Matt. If essential quality truly is two to one in a 20 horse field, that means you're going to have 16 of these horses, double digits. That means you're going to have a lot of good horses, 15, 20, 25 to one in this year's Kentucky Derby. You ready to talk about your long shots? Absolutely. You know, and, and, in, and in this modern day uh, Kentucky Derby, the, the long shots tend to be grouped together. There tend to be a, just a lot more horses who are 20 to 1, 30 to 1, 40 to 1. It's we no longer are there the 90 to 1s, 100 to 1s in the Kentucky Derby that there used to be. And I think that plays into what you were saying, Brian, where it's it, it's hard to pick out the long shots that you like. But I got some uh I got some that I like. Some of them, Brian, quite frankly, I, I don't necessarily necessarily see winning the race, but I do see them as important to use 
in the trifecta, and, and we'll talk more about that in our wagering show that's going to be available to you uh, Horse Center fans uh, on Thursday. But my bombers start out with uh, Dynamic One from the Todd Pletcher barn is 20 to 1 on the morning line. Got a good post position draw in the 11, right in the middle of the field as a horse that, you know, uh, uh, wants to wants to sit mid pack the connections of this horse Pletcher the owners were very very high on this horse uh in heading into the wood memorial i think he's a horse that's getting better you're getting jose ortiz up i like this horse a lot at 20 to 1 yeah, Matt, I, I can't disagree. This horse is getting better. He's looked good in the mornings here at Churchill Downs. He's one of those mid-pack horses we talked about, but I think he's moving in the right direction, and he's bred for 10 furlongs. A lot to like there. Who's your number two on the bomber list? My number two is my big, big, big bomber. I've liked this horse uh, since, I, since he qualified for the Kentucky Derby. It's another Todd Pletcher. That is sainthood sainthood in the jeff ruby um ran a, was was making a move coming down the stretch and at the top of the stretch just got completely shut off brian lost all momentum very quickly got back in stride made a big closing move he broke his maiden on the dirt already um his first two races were on the dirt so i don't think that performance was a reflection of getting on the tapita at Turfway Park. Um, five hole, picks up Corey Lannery, Churchill Downs regular from the five hole. This guy is gonna break slowly, move to the rail. Corey Lannery has kind of become the new Calvin Burrell, a jockey who is known for rail trips at Churchill Down. And that's where he will be. He's gonna save ground and Watch for this guy to come flying 50 to one. He's the key for me to a big day of wagering. And I'll let you know about that on our Thursday show. Now, I'm just going to keep interjecting here with little comments on your bombs. You gray haired gentlemen sure do like to stick together. Todd Pletcher, you're right, though. In the, in the rupee stakes, uh, St. Hood had a lot of trouble. I, everybody could see it. He ran a good race. I worry about his class. And I'm not sure how far he's going to drop back in here, but uh, hey, 50 to one, the odds are right. Maybe, maybe he drops all the way down to 37, 38 to one <laughs> as they go off, but that's a bomb. You get them in your trifecta, your super factor, you're going to be happy. Yeah, absolutely. My third bomber is King Fury, the late addition to the Derby field. Um, loves Churchill Downs, 20 to one. We talked about him a little on the show already. I think his performance, uh, 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 in the Lexington at Keeneland uh, was noteworthy. Another one that's going to be coming late at 20 to 1. Yeah, and they're not projecting too much rain the rest of the week here. It's kind of hot and breezy right now as we speak, uh, about five days out. Uh, King Fury has looked good in the mornings. I liked what I saw in the Lexington too. It's important that he took another step forward because, yeah, he did have two nice wins at Churchill Downs. But he also proved not to be quite at the top level last year as a two-year-old. Uh, Kenny McBeat said he got a little tired late last year. He gave him some time. He's, he's loved the way he's come back. And uh, hey, that Lexington got him in. And now he's a horse maybe on the move, on the rise, peaking at the right time. He might just end up on my bomber list as well. We'll see in a second here. All right, it's time for my bomber list, Matt. I'm going to start with Obesis. This has been my long shot since I saw what I saw for trainer Greg Foley in that Louisiana Derby. Remember, the Louisiana Derby is the longest of all the big American preps at a mile 316th. And I really love the way Obesis finished that race. And if you look at the Louisiana Derby, he was the only one really finishing that race, other than the winner probably keep uh, 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 Hot Rod Charlie. Obesis made up a lot of ground. It was his second time around two turns. I think that's important because coming out of those sprints, I think he was a little short the first time in the nine for a long risen star. But with that experience, he really moved up. I also like the way he's been looking in the mornings here at Churchill Downs, a son of 2013 Kentucky Derby winner Orb. I think Obesis is going to be one of those horses for sure running late. 
I don't know if it's going to get up for seventh or if it's going to get him up for way better than that, but he will be on my tickets. Yeah, and he is a horse who literally has gotten better in every one of his starts. Yeah, I, I also think that's important. This is the time of year where three-year-olds really transition. We talked about it maybe a little bit with King Fury, uh, Known Agenda, uh, maybe Dynamic One, horses that suddenly are getting better this time of year as they're starting to grow into their physiques. Number two on my list, I, I, I have less to, to say than you did because my number two and my number three are horses you had on your list. Dynamic one, I think you've talked me into him a little <laughs> bit, but I really liked what I saw from this horse. He's a good looking horse. As so many Todd Pletchers are, he's looked good here at Churchill Downs. I, I like the fact that he's bred for a distance. I like the fact that he certainly, just like Obastus is getting better with every start. I said he flattened out late in a few of his races, but often the Kentucky Derby is won on the turn. And this would be a horse who could win the Kentucky Derby on the turn because he's a horse that can make that early move. He'll have to keep it going on the stretch, but if he just all of a sudden rallies to the lead at the top of the stretch, look out, Matt Shipman might be right with his bomber in this year's Kentucky Derby. And you're right, Brian, the, the, the last several years, historically the horse that has been in front coming around the turn at the top of the stretch has been very very hard to beat in the Kentucky Derby yeah and, and lately it's been horses who have been closer to the pace early but I still want to gravitate a little bit to those horses that can rally just a little bit on the turn and get there like a dynamic one and another horse I think is a real threat here uh, I'm trying to pick horses that I think can run huge races with these bombers I think all three of mine are 20 to one, unlike Matt Sainthood at 50 to one on the morning line. King Fury just has really impressed me. I, I think he's a horse who is a good two-year-old. You mentioned it. He liked Churchill Downs. Kenny McPeak has him stabled here. I think he's flourishing. I really like his breeding. I really like the way he looks. He looks just the part of a top-notch horse as I see him up close here at Churchill Downs. The Lexington was a good performance. And once again, like Dynamic One, he's one that can make an early move make that maybe mid-pack move to get right there as they straighten out. And, you know, I never thought I would have said this even after the Lexington, but certainly not before the Lexington. I think King Fury is a legitimate uh, shot to run a huge race in the Kentucky Derby. And Brian, quite frankly, it has never been harder to handicap the Kentucky Derby than it is this year with so many horses that are so lightly raced, there's just not that much in their past performances that you can rely on. So many horses with only three starts or four starts um, when it wasn't that many years ago when you know it was seven or eight races that we could rely on. So it isn't get any easier to pick winners in the Kentucky Derby. Agreed, sir. But you know what? That's why we get paid the big bucks that we that we do here at Horse Racing Nation on Horse Center. All right, folks, that's our show. It was chock full of information, hopefully, that helps you make the decisions necessary to cash some tickets in this Kentucky Derby. Like Matt mentioned, though, we'll be talking a whole lot more about our actual wagers, suggested wagers. That's always a fun show in a couple days this week. Uh, but but uh, for as of now, this is where we are. I want to get a parting shot from you, as I always do, Matt. I got to get off uh, the air quickly and start handicapping uh, for our uh, suggested wagers show. I got a couple really good wagers already. I absolutely love my trifecta play in the Derby. There you go, Matt. I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited about some, some of my Friday plays. We got just a, a plethora a smorgasbord of excellent races both Friday and Saturday at Churchill Downs besides the Kentucky Derby. So we're going to dig into that or some of those races with our favorite wagers. As always, I want to thank Tony Bada Bing, our wonderful new producer for all the great things he does. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Thanks to Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. And thanks to all of you watching us every week or tuning in fresh for the Kentucky Derby coverage. We'll be back in a couple of days with a whole lot more. Watch us right here again on Thursday on Horse Center. We'll see you then.